This is Rock Slapping Champions. Player 1, playing Alarak. We have Air Track. And player 2, playing Nova. We have Centharius. So let's have a look at the masteries while the players get set up. We have Alarak, who has gone for the unit attack speed mastery, the death fleet cooldown, and the structure overcharge mastery. And then there's one point here into the Chrono Boost mastery. I'm not really sure why that is. I th I'm wondering whether he, he was going for the 22 8 break point split and just giving an extra point here just to make it a little bit easier to fast expand. Uh, Nova has gone for the airstrike cost reduction, the primary ability improvement, and the 25 5 split into the Nova energy and unit HP regeneration mastery, so they're pretty much ideal. Alarak usually gets a lot more value from the Alarak attack damage unless you're going for a robo build where this might actually be happening, like if you're playing a robo build the unit attack speed mastery will be a little bit more useful and here Alarax empower me is usually the better choice if you are using empower me a lot otherwise you can go for the deathly cooldown reduction so on this mission you can actually fast expand as Alarax so if you send a probe in at the start of the mission maybe around the 30 second mark you can send a probe across you can actually do a fast expand against pretty much any enemy race which is something that Alarak could have done here, but you can see that Nova already is sending an SCV over, and I think they're going to be building their fan, their expansion here. We do have a probe that is moving up here, so let's see what his plan is, and the probe ends up dying, of course. I'm not really sure why the probe went there. There are two overcharges that are available for Alarak, so it is very possible that they wanted to fast expand, but didn't change their mind, I'm not really sure, but anyway, we have Nova that is already building a command center on site. You can do this even at the start of the game, sending a probe, and, uh, sending a probe or not a probe, but an SCV at the start of the game, around 30 second mark, you can actually build your expansion, and then when you have your hero unit out, or when you have a reasonably sized army, you can actually go and clear your expansion. You don't really have to spend the time then building the command center, so that is a really good play there. We have the first attack wave now that has spawned, and Alarak does not appear to have any army out, but he does seem to be getting his death council out, so that means he might be going for an ascendant centric build. And this is what I was talking about earlier, is that unit attack speed mastery does not really benefit his ascendants very much, because his ascendants are units that use their skills to be able to deal damage, and this is probably my favorite part of playing against a classic Terran or even a, like a Zerg composition with Zerglings using that one destruction wave you just one shot the entire attack wave. Nova is already there and she is going to start eating away at the units here that are defending this game and now we have an empower me. An empower me that is being utilized on just Nova which is again a very interesting choice here and actually Nova is within range so Alarak is getting a little bit of value but again he doesn't have any supplicants yet so he's not really getting that much damage output from the empower me. Additionally you can see how quickly that empower me runs out when you do not have that mastery uh, allocated so this is why like if you were going for it it would be very useful. He has a, he's put in a pylon. Is he going to overcharge his pylon? It looks like he wants to overcharge his pylon but does he not know you can overcharge the pylon while it isn't constructed? Okay there we go. So that was somewhat weird as a decision. I'm not really sure why he did that, but he could have overcharged earlier. But yeah, usually the fast expand requires you to move your probe around the back of this mineral line and then drop a pylon over here. And then you can use that one overcharge to clear out the liberators and the vikings and everything else here. You can actually take your expansion really, really quickly. But the second lava surge is out now and the next attack wave is on the way and Alrak unfortunately is left stranded in the expansion area so he will need to find a way of dealing with this. He does have a couple of overcharges so it's not really too bad. There are two overcharges here. I think this might have been a little bit of an overreaction on Alrak's part. You do like the, the structure overcharges are really really strong and the other thing to remember is that it does give you a little bit of a shield as well. You have the whether it shows it, but there is a little bit of a shield. You can kind of see the glaze here that's being applied to that. There is a shield there that keeps these structures alive, so they're not going to die anytime soon. Nova's still in snipe mode, though. No shotgun mode for Nova. Is Nova actually... Did Nova just change over? I think she might have just changed over there. And now we have Alarak, who has warped a, a bunch of Ascendants, and he has a couple of Supplicants as well. What does he have available? He has the Chaotic Attunement, 
and he has a Mind Blast. He does not have the Power Overwhelming upgrade, which is pretty much the most important upgrade here for the Ascendants. That should be the first upgrade that you get, because that one allows them... There we go, that's the Power Overwhelming upgrade I was talking about. That upgrade actually allows your Ascendants to start growing and get stronger. This is where their damage output comes from. It does not really come from the Chaotic Attunement upgrade, or even the Mind Blast, because if you try using a zero stack power overwhelming ascendant to try and kill the in the random corner here i'm not really sure what he's looking at he's inspecting that corner corner seems to be fine now he's gonna go and start auto attacking well i guess if you were auto attacking this stuff it's okay and yeah, rack gets put into the warp prism here there's another missile turret that is aggroing this warp prism. is this warp prism gonna get shot out of the air nope it is very very low They're sitting at 8 hp right now and now rack is gonna exact his revenge on that one missile turret, and now this thing is going to walk into this turret. Excellent! And now, we do have another Empower Me that is being used, and I think those, those Ascendants might have eaten a couple of Supplicants there. And Alrak is basically out of range right now, only that one Supplicant is dealing dam- like, is allowing Alrak to deal a little bit of damage. And you can see how the little damage that Alrak is able to deal as a result of that. He's really out of the way, and he does also not have his Power overwhelming mass reallocated. He has three, he has four gateways. Chronicles is still onto the Senate Archives. Usually for Alarak, if you are going for that kind of build, you macro up with your Nexuses, and then you just give your Chrono Boost to your your ally. And especially someone like Nova, Nova can benefit a lot from the extra stacks. So Alarak is just content with just auto-attacking the enemy base here which is I guess okay eventually the space will run out of structures and now we have an attack wave that is again this is going to be another drop attack that will be flying over Alrak's base now there are two ways of dealing with this one is you could just let this drop attack go to your base to your main and then you deal with it in your main or you can do what Alrak has done right now which is I guess okay that airstrike gone in the opposite direction but you can you can try and deal with this and we have three overcharges that went down to try and deal with that one drop attack but again that drop attack is still not it's still not done there is still a few more stuff here and now there is going to be a drop onto these supplicants here and this medevac is actually going to be getting a lot of good value so this medevac is going to be healing up this marauder and this fireback and there's another warp in here and I think this one supplicant might actually end up getting killed off as well as a result. And just see this barrage just tanking everything there. The two supplicants have died as a result of that drop attack. And Alrak is still auto attacking the starport over here. And Nova, on the other hand, has cleared up this side and this side as well. And is this going to start brutalizing Amon on this part as well? Alrak continuing to auto attack with also not all of his ascendants, which is. What is oh, okay? So Alaric must be looking at something. Oh, he's looking at oh, he's looking at his army. Why is he like what? Why is he looking? Okay, he wants to get his supplicants in here. Okay, so now I think he's getting ready to get ready to push into the southern base. I think is he going to push in? Yeah, okay. So he's going to have to be a little bit careful. These ascendants do have some power overwhelming stuff, but they're only at two stacks right now, and that one war prism is getting focused far down by the missile turret. War prism goes down, so Alrak has no reinforcements, and now there's a couple of liberators over here, and these things are going to be dealing so much damage. Hybrid Dominator also very upset with Alrak, and is going to start using his plasma blast and storms on top of those ascendants. And Alrak is actually fighting with his army right in the middle of that liberation zone. Uses an Power me to get a little bit of value, but he's not using any of his skills to deal area and splash damage to the stuff here. And as a result, all of his ascendants have died. And I think there's a little bit more damage to some more of the supplicants, but a total of six supplicants right now. One extra warp prism. Both his havocs have died because they got focused fired down. And five ascendants have also ended up dying. His SCPs are trying to repair that missile turret. They're actually getting a lot of good value here. And the other thing I have realized is Alrak seems to be very much enjoying the auto attacking, but he does not have any attack upgrades just yet. There is an overcharge onto this war prism right now, and the overcharge is probably going to end up getting wasted because that, that war prism is not going to get repositioned so that it can deal a little bit more damage, and Alrak is just auto attacking everything here. And now, there's going to be another drop attack here to defend this crystal. There's one last shot coming over here. This is a nice destruction wave of an Alrak. He does end up killing off a good chunk of the marines here. And the one the Senate does take a little bit of damage from the Marauders. That's reasonably weak because it has no power overwhelming stacks yet. 
but it all seems to be okay here. Yeah, actually, none of these Ascendants have the power of rolling attacks. They're freshly warped and raped. I kind of forgot that he lost the other Ascendants. And now we have a Death Fleet that gets dropped from Alarak to try and clear out the rest of this base here. And Nova is just gonna go and start murdering Amon's army, and those are all the Christmas screen which we worked up. And there was a random probe here that was moving around, and that ends up getting killed off. And this is gonna be a really nice airstrike from Nova, pretty much one shot that entire attack wave. That was pretty much a perfect airstrike there. And now, Alarak is gonna be moving his Death Fleet and himself towards this next base here. This definitely does a good amount of damage, but there are two hybrid behemoths in this area with a bunch of goliaths as well, and Alarak is taking so much damage that he is just gonna start nibbling away at the supplicants to keep himself alive. And he also has four ascents on the back line here. Alarak does a small tactical retreat, four prism gets picked off, and now there's another war prism on the back line, but Alarak does have it sieged up in a good position here. Viking takes to the air and will start dealing damage to that war prism. That war prism will also go down, and now Alarak now gets focused fired down by a couple of hybrid behemoths and all those Zenons have gone down and Alarak is going to start getting focused fired down as well by those hybrid behemoths and ends up dying as well. A total of somewhere he actually lost four photon cannons. I'm not really sure where those cannons were but I have no idea where those four photon cannons went but two probes, 21 supplicants. 4 War Prisms, 2 Havocs, and 9 Ascendants, and 1 Alarak have died so far and in this mission. And Nova has lost 1 SCV and 1 Nova, and she is just going to continue this killing. So just take a look at how Nova's army, because Alarak is somewhat being, re being reset right now. So it's going to be a while before he comes up and decides to exact his revenge. But yeah, no, no attack upgrades. He has a supplicate upgrade, which I guess is okay. But if he intends on using supplicants for dealing damage, you probably want to get your attack upgrades. Attack upgrades? Okay, right now the attack upgrade... Okay, so he's queued up, he has his attack upgrade, but he's also queued up the armor and the shield upgrade onto the same forge, so it means realistically he's never gonna go up above one attack upgrade. And additionally, if you're going for armor, like armor and shield upgrades are not very useful. I always say this and people will always seem to go prefer these upgrades, they're not very useful if you're not playing ladder. If you're playing co-op, those upgrades are are basically a waste of resources, if on most commanders at least. But now, Alrak is over here, what is he looking at? He's looking at his base right now, he does have a good chunk of war prisms, and he has noticed that there is... What's he, what's he doing? He wants to deal with... The attack wave? Well, no, he wants to actually go and pick up these crystals, which I guess is okay. He wants to try and help his ally out. Now he's realized Noah's just murdered the whole attack wave. And now Alarak will be moving towards this area here to pick up... Okay, he's gonna support his probes, moving his army of supplicants. And he wants to drop a death fleet over here, which I guess is okay. This is gonna end up clearing out the harassed waves here, but Noah had that pretty much covered. And Alrak is going to be moving now towards Bones Objective, I think, because that is the only thing he hasn't killed off yet, or has not killed him yet. So, to make sure that that is going okay. Alrak will be moving towards this area. I think Noah has cleaned up this this spot as well. Usually there are a lot of Widow Mines here that can end up... Oh no, he, no, there was, no, there was, there was still a Widow Mine there. And Alrak does end up losing, I think, four, four more Ascendants, which was... Somewhat not what I was expecting. The next Lava Surge is out now, and Aralak will be getting into position. Ascendants are focusing down this one SCV, but they will be able to make it to high ground safely before the Lava comes up. And now we have the War Prism that gets sieged up. Alarak is going to engage this part first, which is again really really interesting. And now we have the first psionic orbs that get sent off from the Ascendants, which is again really really surprising. He had those Ascendants for a very long time, and now these hybrid behemoths who have been damaged from the previous engage are going to be cleaned up. Nova is just basically going to siege up and completely delete Molten Cell before Alarak knows what's going on, and he is going to continue just attacking these barracks. Alarak doesn't it really does not like Amon structures, does he? He has a thing for those structures, and he's gonna end up cleaning up pretty much all the structures that are remaining here. There's only one small issue is the fact that he has actually left those structures in that side. I wonder if he's gonna go and try and clean that up. No, he does not. There's a overcharge here for some no apparent reason. I think that was a little bit of a late overcharge to try and deal with Molten Cell. That was after Nova deleted Molten Cell as well. 
And Alarak wants to go and engage this attack wave, which is already been killed off by Nova. And now there are just a bunch of liberators here that will end up killing off the rest of these things. Two, one SCV I think did end up getting picked off. Second SCV also ends up getting picked off here. So we're going to send a couple more here with Alarak moving now into position. He's going to save his flailing ally and he will show his ally how to actually auto attack the enemy units dead. Good. Oh no, he's using his he's using his psionic orb towards the crystal where nothing is alive. But I guess that is also okay. Where is he gonna go next? There are a few more. Did Noah's SCV? Oh no, his probe got killed by that same His probe got killed by that same widow mine that killed off his ascendants earlier. That one widow mine there. I do not know how many kills are there on that one widow mine. I kinda wanna check that, but unfortunately I think I picked up. That one widow mine doing so much work there, killing off four of the ascendants and one more probe that was going to try and pick up that crystal. There's another attack wave here. And Noah has ended up nuking it. Alrak was nowhere even near in range. And I don't think he I don't even think he was actually in the correct position. I don't think he positioned it correctly because this wave was actually moving, I think, this way. And Nova now is gonna go back to the main base because I think that is gonna be the last course. So what is Alarak gonna do? Is Okay, Nova is just gonna use her defensive drones to get vision so she can one-shot this attack wave. And I think there's just one last siege tank left, but I think that is gonna be the last crystal that will be deposited into the environmental stabilizer. And I think, yeah, that is done by the SCV because the probe that was sent there got killed by the Widowmine. That is very dear Prime saved, and that is GG.